my name is Jocelyn and I have ADHD. My path to figuring out that I had ADHD is kind of long and twisty. So I grew up kind of, you know, I was smart enough that I got straight A's all the time, but I was just always in trouble. So I, you know, losing homework, doing things late. I can't tell you how many times I pulled all-nighters, especially once I hit high school and just constantly fighting with my parents. Uh, you know, being, I grew up being called lazy all the time, irresponsible, all those sorts of, sorts of words. And, you know, I went to college and, you know, all of the, the help that you get from having parental figures and structure disappeared and it just sort of, it got worse. But again, I, you know, I was really lucky to be privileged with a, a smart enough brain that I got through it. But it wasn't until I was doing my dissertation and uh, in, in my PhD, I just, I hit this wall and I just, I couldn't figure out why everybody else could get things done. And I just could not move past that at that point. And so I finally, um, you know, I went and talked to a therapist and they were like, did you ever get tested for ADHD? And I was just kind of like, well, that's ridiculous. You know, I wasn't ever in trouble in school. I got really good grades. How could that possibly be me? And they had me fill out the, the checklist, the form, and it was wild. Like, seriously, I just was like, yes, that's me, that's me, that's me. And it was the biggest relief I think I've ever felt. The first time I took Adderall, I actually cried. Like, I literally had tears streaming down my face because I finally, you know, knew what neurotypical people feel like and I'd never felt that sort of internal peace um, and it just it felt like this giant weight lifting because suddenly all of those words that I had internalized that I'd been called my whole life of being lazy and irresponsible and disrespectful of other people's time and all these things they weren't my fault anymore they 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 were this condition that I had I mean so you hear this like this term neurotypical thrown a lot in, in this world uh, quite a bit and I mean with neurotypical it's this idea that the world that we live in was built by and for people that are quote unquote normal. So, you know, they can focus, they can, you know, feel emotion and understand other people's emotions and all these different things. And so regardless of what it is that you have that is different, if you don't fit within that framework or that box, then you're not neurotypical. I, so many times over my life, people told me like, you're really intense. And I'm just like, I'm not intense. I'm so laid back. I don't know what you're talking about. And again, it was like when I took that Adderall and I was like, oh, there's, there's this like inner motor that's just always running and never stops. And I think that's what people interpret as intense. And to actually have that like kind of calm down a little bit was just this like relaxing, soothing feeling. I actually fall asleep sometimes when I take it because I think it's like the only time my brain and body are actually calm enough uh, when that happens. Um, but the other thing I think about when I think about this like neurotypical thing is that, you know, it's, Society is pretty cool that non-neurotypical people exist, right? Like if everybody was neurotypical, we'd be missing out on creative people and people that are alert enough to understand like when there's danger and all these different things that having diversity of neurotypes does. So with having ADHD, I mean, the, the thing that can be difficult is when you try to explain to other people what you're experiencing or what that is like. And so, you know, so many times things will happen where I'm like, oh, you know, I am so incredibly forgetful. I can't believe how many things I forget. Or, you know, it's almost like my brain feels fractured and I, I just can't get through the things I need to do. And the person responds with, oh, me too. You know, so when you're telling people what this feels like or what it is you're experiencing and all they come back with is like, well, everybody experiences that. It's just totally invalidating. And so it can be lonely where you, you desperately want the people that you work with, the people that you live with or share your life with to understand just how different and at times difficult it is to live, you know, with ADHD or whatever it is that you have. And when they just kind of pick up on the symptoms and are like, well, I occasionally experience that, so I must know what that is like. It just feels not only invalidating, but also just, you know, very lonely that you can't, you don't get that chance to have somebody else that knows what you're going through. So a good day, like day in the life of ADHD, um, on a good day, I actually, 
you know, I probably have to plan my outfit out the, the day before. I probably have to pack meals and figure out what I'm gonna eat the next day. Like to have a good day, a lot of prep and effort goes into that. Um, on my very best days, I probably actually force myself to meditate because that does do a ton of good, even though it's so hard to make oneself do it. Um, but I actually, I'm able to like finish my thoughts and prioritize. I think probably the biggest thing is it's just a constant like flow of I have 600 things and my brain can't decide which is most important. And so it feels like 600 things have to get done today, which anybody who's neurotypical would be like, that's impossible. Why don't you prioritize and figure out what's actually able to be done? And instead, um, you know, it just feels like this mad rush from thing to thing to thing and just constant failure. So on good days, I'm actually able to say, okay, realistically, I can get, you know, these five things done today and I'm going to actually decide what's important and what's not important and do them in an order of importance. And I'm gonna eat healthy meals and actually cook for myself and get some exercise, which is so important for ADHD. Um, but you know, bad days and with the pandemic, it's like, you know, I thought this was what a bad day was and now pandemic times, I'm like, oh, nope, I'm finding new levels. Like bad days can be even worse than this. So for example, the other day, I tried to turn my bathroom lights off by pushing on the water, like the handle of the, the water faucet. Like I literally, and I pushed on it and I couldn't figure out why the lights weren't turning off. So I pushed it on again. So it's just like, it feels like my brain is constantly being fractured. I was eating snacks one day and I accidentally left it in the basket where I keep the dog treats. Why? I don't know. But then later I'm just madly searching the house. Like where's that bag of snacks I was eating from? found it in the dog treats. I find my keys in my fridge. I um, sign myself up and agree to do like 10 different tasks, which, you know, many people will be like, that's not possible. Why would you ever do that? But I think that I can do, it's almost like I am um, task and time optimistic and have no concept of how long things take and how much effort they take. And um, yeah, so a bad day with ADHD is just sort of all of these things piling on top of each other. I don't get enough sleep. I can't make myself go to bed at night. I frequently am up till 2 a.m. Um, and then can't get up in the morning, don't eat properly, don't exercise, and then it just all falls apart. But the good days, um, I think, really hinge on having structure and, you know, occasionally some assistance in deciding, like, what can I actually get done? One thing I do think that people don't realize is how exhausting it is. Like I have at least one day a week where I pretty much just collapse. Like I can't get anything done. I am just so exhausted. Because if you think about it, if your brain is just going nonstop constantly and, and also your body's going nonstop because you're constantly getting up and moving around and all those things, but your brain is just constantly going. It's like exhausting being me. And I've definitely said that out loud to friends before as I'm frantically searching my house for my keys and then my wallet and then my shoes. And then like, I've already lost my keys again while searching for my wallet. Um, so I think people don't realize just how exhausting it is and that the things that we do aren't, they're not a sign of like lack of respect or concern or any of those things. Like it's not, it's not anything about the other person. It's just us trying to get through like the hot mess that can sometimes be our lives. So, so if you love somebody who has ADHD or care for somebody who has ADHD, um, I mean, I think it could be really helpful to, um, I mean, certainly don't infantilize. I think that can often happen where like, I always have to clean up after you or you're always losing things, but to more, you know, like be that like voice of support and reminder that like you are the amazing things of this too. Like you are creative, like you're amazing at brainstorming or you're so good about thinking through problems in ways that other people don't see them or seeing other points of view. Um, I think a lot of times people end up focusing on the downside, which is like your room is always messy or, you know, like you always forget really important documents or you show up to things extremely late. Um, so, you know, like helping that person remember that they're not all these negative characteristics. Um, and then, you know, remembering, because I'm, I'm sure it can be frustrating, right? Like it can definitely be frustrating to love or care for somebody that has ADHD. Um, so just not, not internalizing it yourself. Don't take it personally. It's not ever about you. If you're struggling with this, if you think you might have ADHD or you just got diagnosed, I know 
When I was going through that process, I had literally decades, because I was in my 30s when I learned that I had ADHD, when I got diagnosed. I had literal decades of um, people telling me all these negative things about myself that I had internalized. And I, you know, I carried that as a really heavy burden every day, even, you know, I might not have realized that's what was happening, but it was. I wore those labels of lazy and irresponsible and uncaring for so long. And they really, um, they shaped how I viewed the world and viewed myself in it. And getting diagnosed gave me the space to sort of figure out, well, who am I without those labels? There was just, there was so much power in learning that it wasn't my fault. Just knowing that this, these things that neurotypicals really value, um, they're not flaws of you. They're this thing that whatever you have leads you to act in that way or be that way. And that's not your fault. It's not core to who you are. And it was just a really beautiful, powerful thing. And so you have that ahead of you.